This video is brought to you by eToro. Now you may have seen that eToro sponsor a number of Premier League clubs and you might be wondering, who are they? Well, eToro is a global investment platform with over 16 million registered users, which offers everything from stocks, currencies and commodities to cryptos like Bitcoin. Now, if you don't have time to invest, eToro is perfect. You can use eToro's copy trader feature, copy top performing investors, so when they make a trade, you make the same trade automatically at no additional cost. So if you're looking to start investing and you want to find out more about eToro, then click the link in the description and get on it right now. Hi and welcome to AFTV. You've tuned in to the pre-match build-up show with myself, Cecil G and my guy, James B. Now, I just want to quickly start off by saying that this morning we normally have a live show every morning, but because it's match day and we've already had content come out to, on, to, on top of this game, we thought, Let's not do the, the morning, the morning live. I mean, oh, well, we we well, well, we didn't think that. We didn't think that. We'd have been inspired if we thought that. But Don Robbie said, "Listen, there's there's no need for it. We're gonna go live now and break down Dundalk. We're gonna break down Spurs and our last performance. It's gonna be painful, but we can really get into the nitty gritties of it. And I think it's something that we we should go through. You know what I mean? Before we go forward, and then we have got yeah. um, a Bamiang an, um, analyst. We're gonna talk about Bamiang. I'm gonna speak about him a lot as a fellow striker. Um, I want to break down." what's been going on at Arsenal and why he may not be scoring or what, what the team are trying to do. And then lastly, we'll be building you guys 11, so make sure you get your comments in because we'll be building, and I promise you we'll be building the 11s today. So we, we, we always overrun because we get congested with comments. We want to answer everything that's been said. But today we'll be building your fan 11s for, for today's game, really. So done Dundalk. Dundalk. Yeah. Dundalk. Tell us, I mean, look, the, the, the big questions here are, who do you want to see playing and why? How would you approach the fact that we're playing badly in the Premier League? Should we be using this as a friendly to test different things? Is mm. it about giving youngsters minutes? Let us know and we'll build it. And as Cecil said, we'll actually build them because in yeah. the past we've we've kind of left it as the last thing. We get caught up blabbering on about Arsenal. Yeah, so, so yeah. So Let's please, please have a think about who you want who you want to be starting today. If it's youngsters, I mean, this game's kind of, as, as harsh as this. It's not even harsh. Is this is it as I want to say? Is this game's kind of a nothing game? Mm. I know that that may be. I don't know, is that, is that harsh? It's not no, harsh. We've, we've, we've won the group. We've won the group, we're through. We're, we're through. They're bottom, we're top of the group. We've got, it's December, we've got a lot of games coming. It is, it is a nothing game. It's not for them. And mm. like, let's must stress that for them, it's a big deal that Arsenal comes to town. Um, and we absolutely want to, you know, enjoy the occasion with them. I, I completely accept all that. Mm -hmm. But for, for our fixture list and our priorities over the next month or two, this is absolutely just a glorified friendly from our perspective. So. I assume we'll probably treat it that way, especially with you know having five subs and all that to you. So, yeah. But mm. Before we talk about all that, let's go. Let's look, to... do a look back to the North London derby. Now, I'm sorry to go. This back one's to painful. This, you know. It is. It is. But we. Re I want to. We want to break it down and see where we're going wrong and where we went wrong. I mm. mean, you've done a lot of analysis on it. We've. I've looked back at it as well. We've got a lot of things to talk about. And yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's get into it, James. All right. So this is the formation. Well, let's do it. Um, I'm just going to come straight in with some of my thoughts while they're sort of fresh in my mind and while I'm... Do you know what? I was in a good mood today. Now, thinking back at it, it's just like winding me up. <laughs> um, when we were last in these chairs doing the build-up show ahead of that Spurs game, I said that Spurs beat City 2-0 in a very similar fashion to the way they beat us. And the lot, a lot of the... How do I put it? A lot of what I was saying was that we probably won't suffer the same fate because I don't think we're good enough mm. to go and attack Spurs and think that we can get anything. Yeah. I was wrong. Apparently, we did think we were good enough mm. to go and play football. And that's, what Arteta, maybe, that's what he said. He wants to go there and take it to them. Which he did. It's naive in my, in my opinion. Incre I think incredibly naive. It's one thing doing it to Solskjaer and United, who, yes, are good on the counter-attack, but they're also suspect at best at the back mm. but we knew a Mourinho so I was always going to be resolute difficult to be I'm so surprised we went with that system I mean I'm just looking at here when we had the ball Lacazette did well to drop in and help but we had Saka and William coming quite central at times sometimes pulling out wide as well but basically occupying areas that we said we wanted them to occupy with Tierney and Bellerin getting really high up the pitch and it's just you've got this sort of how festive Christmas tree sort of <laughs> system and I just thought it was so brave of us to leave Holding and Gabriel. Yeah. Not least Holding, who's not one for one-on-one -on -one defending. We've seen how Sadio Mane has caused him so many problems over the last few months yeah. in the various meetings we've had with Liverpool. I was just so surprised that um, 
he went with such an expansive system. Would you say, and would you guys say, that Arteta was stubborn in his approach by going attack, full out attack against Tottenham due to what the performance that happened at Man United? Because I mm. think that's where we last played really well as Man United. Yes, yes, we only won 1-0 by a penalty. However, mm. we, we actually played really well by taking it to United. Do you think Arteta thought, do you know what? It worked there. It could work again. Or do you think... Or do you not? Do you I think Arteta looked at this game as the last of what's been a horrendous run of fixtures. Even because you've got to think, without fans, being mm. at home to Villa, Wolves, and Leicester doesn't really make much of a difference. Of course, you get certain advantages, but on the whole, if there's not a packed Emirates, it's not really the same, right? And mm -hmm. it's, that's the same for our away games. There's mm -hmm. a reason we've been better away from home than we have been at home. Um, I think he saw this as one last roll of the dice at the end of what's been a horrendous run, if we get a win at Spurs, kind of everything kind of flips. It's yeah. like, we've beaten Spurs, we've got a really favourable run, come on, let's kick on now. And I think he was really desperate for that result. He was desperate to be the one who went to Mourinho's backyard and beat them, mm -hmm. and beat them well, and beat them showing this is the football you can play. Now, in fairness, what well, I would say, it wasn't a case of us being, you know, totally naive with Spurs, you know, countering and countering until eventually they picked us off. Mm -hmm. In fact, the two Spurs goals they scored were of tremendous quality. Yeah. In fact, a lot of them don't go in. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. because, because Son hit it so well in that moment and so did Kane, and the counter-attacks were so sharp. Mm -hmm. That's not to discredit Spurs. You could say, in another day, I'm not sure those necessarily go in. You think of the party and say, we'll, we'll talk about them in more detail. Yeah, when we get to them. Can I just quickly but, take, um, sorry, Lloyd Pope, thank you for your super chat. He says, Balogun, Cedric, Mari, Smith Rowe and Martelli, a must start. Um, I agree. Bellerin doesn't even have, make the team until his contract is up. Then bye bye. Yeah, uh, Bellerin was poor, I thought. Um, but today will be a good time for him to play to practice the throw-ins in a competitive match. You've so got to stop with that. <laughs> I, just, I, think, I think, listen, he, that'll be good for him. It'll be good for him to start. If, I think Bellerin, this is the time he needs. Um, the, other, the other thing I noticed from this that I thought really... I remember us saying when we talked about how important Partey was, we said the beauty of having Partey is that you can basically play him as one of a deep... You could basically play him as the only defensive midfielder yeah. and he'll dominate in that sense. But we had Jacka, and it just keeps me thinking, you know, he's so reluctant to play Jacker on his own. He always needs him in a two. And what we basically saw was the few times where actually they did beat the press past Partey. We were completely exposed. I thought Partey, a lot of people said he struggled in the kind of 43, 44 minutes he played. You could see he wasn't quite at it. Maybe he wasn't quite at it. Do you? I, no, well, no, 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 that's what others have been saying. Oh, I thought I, he was our best player on the pitch. Yeah, I disagree I thought he that. was actually the best player on the pitch, yeah, actually, agreed. including Spurs players. I thought Thomas Partey looked an absolute cut above. Hoybier couldn't really get near him. He was beating players. He was winning the ball every time he pressed. He won 100% of his aerial duels, I think. Partey was superb. And when we lost him, it was a big miss. Um, Granite Jack, I thought, really struggled. And yeah, those are just my general thoughts about the formation. Again, we left holding really exposed at times, but... Can I give them credit for at least having a go? Maybe. maybe. I, I mean, thought it was naive, but yeah. at least in fairness, Arteta had the right intention, which was go to go to our neighbours and try and assert try our dominance. Try and do something. Yeah, some, I'm it was naive and we got picked off. going to take some comments as well. And Kodal says, if Arsenal win this, they win the, they win the league. I mean, <laughs> I'm all for optimism. But, That's I mean, quite a, it's a big statement. It's not even a league um, game. Ozil is better than Arsenal, a regular of one of our shows. Says, I'd rather do my English homework than watch a Thursday night match. Um, <laughs> we live for a Thursday night match because that's the only time I get to see Arsenal play really well. Yeah. Um, Barvin says, only thing that, need fr that needs throwing is Bellerin. Uh, oh, I'm not going to say what he said. He's referring to Bellerin in the bin. I'm not going to okay. say what he said. But um, <laughs> Damari Green, how much communication that caused the first goal? Oh, Dam Damari Green is holding... It was holding miscommunication that caused the first goal. It was holding miscommunication. Okay. Now we're going James again tactically. I told he, we love when he does this. He's recreated the goal, so we'll get into that in a second, and we'll, and you guys can watch it on his amazing cool tactical pad. I love this. is a great feature of our show. But um, yeah, we'll break it down, and I'll, we'll give our both our thoughts and opinions, and you guys can also do that as well. Um, yeah, let's. I mean, let's get into it. I think a lot of the comments are they want to see Balogun Thursday night football. Um, we're going to miss Partey, zoom, zoom, zoom. People are saying things like, um, 
yeah, Thursday night's the night. Should Aziz start? Should Balogun start? Joe Bolton says should Aziz start? I think the youngsters should definitely start, but we'll get into I think so too. team selection towards the end of the show. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Keep your comments coming in. You know, listen, we know you, we always love them and we'll always read them out as much as we can. We need consistent, a consistent team, someone said. Sorry, on that last yeah. one. Chris Shaw said we need a consistent team. But uh, I suppose in times like this, we, we, we can't have a consistent team. Europa League, we've, we've got so around. many games. Um, <laughs> we have so many games. It's difficult to get a consistency, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and I think when, um, when the Europa League oppositions are who they are, I think you do have to rotate and there's no point risking injury. You know, say you want to get... Um, a Batman player, which is something we've discussed in the studio. Yeah. I, w- I would like a Batman to play tonight. He he's not. He's being rested. We know that. Um, but it's a shame. I think he needs the confidence and he needs the game time. But then if he gets injured, you're thinking, God, what was the point? And it's a bit like Partey and the risk we took playing him against Spurs. Yeah. But at least it was a North London derby. Exactly. I think um, just before we move on, um, yes, Don Robbie's in the building. He's still here. Don't worry. He hasn't left. He's oh, here. I'm actually getting sick Get of these comments. Me every day. Um, and some people are saying the first team should start tonight. I just want to make it clear to everyone again, we said at the beginning, we are completely through the, to this knockout stage of the Europa League. We're playing the bottom of the, our group Our group at the moment. We are top. And it's a basically a nothing game. So I expect to see a complete, just re complete different team. And mm. maybe some senior players just to get confidence. Yeah. That's all I want to say on that. Let's have a little look at the first goal, um, Son. Now, there's not a lot to analyse here. The, ma- the main reason being that it was a really good strike. Mm-hmm. It was a really good strike. And I've looked at kind of the movement. Well, let's watch it back first. Um, the ball comes into Kane. It gets around Partey. For my liking, a little easily. I know we're kind of recreating it as best as possible. It's not really ideal. Better and obviously slots in as Holdings dropping back. and Slips. Nothing. No, it doesn't affect anything, but... <laughs> he does slip, you're does right, slip. Um, as he's dropping back. So, Regulon, I appreciate that movement you saw was a, a little mad. When He's kind of... You're going to chat about gonna Regulon. It, yeah. The point is that he overlaps. But what where, where I want to go back to is this bit here, it comes into Kane. Now, the thing that I find a little frustrating about this bit is from a tactical perspective, it's like we didn't know what Kane does best. Yeah. He always drops in. He's very strong. He looks after the ball very well. Gabriel, in fairness, there was an awkward bounce, I think. It was like a header or something. It came to Kane. Gabriel's a little sort of flat-footed. But really, I don't really think it should even be Gabriel's man. I'm thinking if Partey's not playing as one of a two, because mm. him and Jack are right, so Partey's occupying the right a little bit more. Jack is operating the left, as mm. we know he always does, obsesses over the left. I think Partey, if he's playing as one, as the only one of a deeper kind of three, I think he's picking up Kane personally. Mm. But that, but anyway, it's kind of irrelevant really. He gets the ball, he looks after it well, and he plays it out to Son. Now, what's happened here is because Kane is beaten. Why do I keep spinning this way? Right, <laughs> because Kane has he's got away from Gabriel. He's, he's kind of. Caught wrong-footed there. Yeah. And his touch takes him around Partey. Bellerin has been sucked into this position. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Apparently, I need to update my um, oh, Samsung. So yeah. thank you for doing that in the middle of our show. Um, <laughs> it does do that sometimes. <laughs> this is what it is. This is YouTube. This is what it is. Listen. Um, <laughs> don't worry about that. Don't let, listen. It's no, fine. that's funny. But yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so jokes. Right. So Kane's got the ball. And Bellerin, for me, has been sucked into... Um, He's been sucked into the ball there and he's left son. Yeah. Now, that, for me, that's really amateurish. I would be running back with him. And I understand why, because we're trying to press on the front foot and the next goal is kind of a better representation of what we did wrong on the press. Mm. Um, Bellerin's obviously been sucked to the ball. He thinks he can probably win it off Kane. But it obviously doesn't. Gets nowhere near him and son's got the ball. By this point, Regulon is overlapping. Now, you wanted to say something about the Regulon overlap here. Yeah, so obviously the comment before, um, someone said it was Holden's miscommunication. Now, what I want to say is there's many things that I want to say on this topic. So football now is a transitional game. It's, it's, it's where the attack gets... It's, goals get scored within transition. Um, yeah. Big up Graham as well. He's one that mentioned it as well today. And I also agree with him. I also feel like... Um, Football is like a game of chess. As soon as someone leaves a position, that's where they attack. Mm-hmm. That's why I think Arteta is naive by going full out attack against Tottenham when he, he knows Mourinho's tactically. Mm. He's one of the best at, at, at um, attacking, yeah, when the, the gaps within a team, right? Mm. So my first question was, obviously, we get the fullbacks bombing on. We mm. get it. There was, what, 44 crosses in the game? Yeah, so, I don't want to know. So, it, so it was very clear that... I think Marina could have, could have sussed and been like, you know what, let's just attack when they... We'll, we'll, be, we'll counter them, basically, mm-hmm. is what, what Marina wants to do. And I don't see yeah. why um, we should be the counter-attacking team, in my opinion, Arsenal. Um, and 
Bellerin was left exposed by mm -hmm. going forward, obviously putting a cross in and losing the ball. Mm -hmm. But instead of tracking back, here's where I have a problem. He, had, he tracked back and wanted to fill in mm -hmm. this gap to stop the to fill in this gap. But I don't think he needed to do that, James. I think he should have came to the ball and stopped um, Son or Regulon. Well, obviously the overlap stopped Holding from pressing. Just so you guys know, I don't think it's Holding's bad defending. I don't personally rate Holding very highly, but yeah, I don't think it's his. It, he couldn't done anything there. He was backtracking. Yeah. He was holding up play because. If he slips in Regulon, Holden's completely out of position. So, yeah. in my opinion, Holden did the right thing. What I have a problem with is, is Bellerin should have... He, I know the game was moving fast, so he may not have got back in, but he should have went straight to, the, to a defend the ball instead of defending the space. Because the players that were breaking forward didn't really make it um, as but an option. He's trying, to, he's trying to fix his first error. Mm. So, so, Bell, so, so, let's take it back a sec here. How do I do it? Bellerin has gone to press Kane... You see with the arrows where everyone's movement is. Bellerin's gone to press Kane. Mm. So by doing that, he's left Son exposed. So Holdings had to come across. Yep. Holdings then dropping back loads because yep. he doesn't trust himself. He knows yep. he's not... He's not this oh, yeah. is, it's not his fault, but then it's irritating. That doesn't mean I rate him any more for it because he's... He's not fast enough. He doesn't back himself one on his son. So he's dropping and dropping yeah, and dropping. So he's, we he's saw against enough. Villa yeah. when he was like not committing to a tackle. He was kind of on his tiptoes. Yeah, doing the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 he's yeah. like he's trying to stay, stay sharp. But he's yeah. like, if I commit, I think they're going to get round me. He doesn't trust himself in that sense. So, which is which is awful, by the way, for a defender to not trust yourself in making a challenge. Just that's just in my opinion. But I understand there is good players within within the sport of football, but you should be able to back yourself in making a challenge. I I, I think so. Anyway, Son keeps coming. Bellerin obviously drops back. Slots into that space. Reginald's made the overlap. But by this point, this is where I kind of stop blaming the defence. The errors were made in the press. Holding sat back a little too deep. Maybe if he got closer to him, I, I understand why he's done. I understand why he's dropping yeah. back. But then, but then the strike's just too good. The strike's really good. Question. Any blame on Leno? I said no. Downstairs, um, when we spoke to the, the other team, they kind of... Put a, not a blame, but they say he could have done better with it. But in my opinion, there was a bit of debate. Wasn't it was there? a big there was yeah, a it was bit a of debate, like, but it was, it's a class finish. I it is it is a class finish. You could say Leno's positioning, but I mean, I think if I'm honest, most keepers would wouldn't save that. If I'm mm. going to be completely honest, I don't. I think it kind of came out of not out of nowhere, but it was an unexpected um, shot from Son that far out. Before I move on, mm. Kyle Middleton, thank you for your super chat. He says, "No disrespect, lads, but Dundalk Stadium is called Oriel Park." not stadium. Also, game is being played at the Aviva Stadium. Hope Dundalk play well. Then, Lloyd Pope again with a super chat. I'd rather see uh, young players like Mari, Saka, Smith Rowe um, in the Premier League than our main team. At least we'll have an attacking team. And do you know what? I can't argue with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I agree. I can't. I can't. I agree. I'd, Anyone I'd... who tuned into our preview show knows that we have our own expectations of what we want from the 11s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, so it's, it's, the one thing that is interesting about the Europa League ties is who he starts and why. Yeah. I always quite like watching that. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, we've got another goal to break down. Oh, why couldn't we have just got something out of this game? So a karate, karate uh, comment said, this, this game has rattled Arsenal fans and it's, it's still rattled. Um, I think he's, I don't know if he's speaking to people in the comments as well, but I'm going to be honest, this one did, it, it did affect me, but... We move? <laughs> no, it didn't affect me as much as Villa and Leicester. Those two really... Oh, the Villa, oh, the Villa, Villa one Villa and Leicester. Bad. Wolves, by this point, I was numb and just kind of knew how bad we were at Yeah. Home. This was... The I Villa mean, one was bad. We hate to say it because we're Arsenal fans and it's Spurs. It's our biggest rivals. But this result was predictable. Yeah. It, it was. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it was. It was the expected result. We just obviously, you go in with hope. Whereas the other results at home especially weren't expected. Um... Should we break down this goal? Yeah, let's break it down. Let me watch it back. So there's two, there's two phases to this. And this is one thing I really want to point out. I do not show the movement of every player. I only show the movement of the players where it's kind of Effective. important. Some aren't important. I'm not going to analyse a player if I've not given them the correct movement and everything. It's just not fair. I'm not going to make it look like something it's not, obviously. Yeah. So, yeah, go on. Feast your eyes on Partey in this, in this as well. It's yeah. <laughs> It's great, but yeah, it's, it's, we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't laugh. And actually, let's laugh. just actually let's say a, real, a serious word on that. Partey, love the guy. He was phenomenal. I thought in that game. Mm -hmm. Okay, phenomenal is over the top. He was very very good in that game. Yep. I thought he was our best player on the pitch. I thought he was superb. If anything looked like happening, it came through him. But it's absolutely criminal the way he walked off the pitch. I can understand he. Oh, do you, do you seriously? Is that I've what changed you think? my mind. Wow. Yeah. I at first at first I thought. 
We don't, and I still to a degree think this, we don't really know what's happened. Yeah. We don't really know why he's gone off. Um, but you don't do that. I, I, I think you, you don't sort of vacate your duty like that. I do think that was bad. I thought Mo summed up brilliantly. Uh, James McNicholas at The Athletic with Gunner blog, uh, with Ars blog as well said it. And listening to them, I have changed my mind. You, you go down or something. Yeah, that I agree you with. You wave. That I agree with. Something. You don't just walk off the pit. Now, that wouldn't have necessarily made the situation better, but it might have put pressure on Tottenham to kick it out. It might have, it might have done something. But just walking off yeah. was poor. And if he did, you know, did he give Jacker a call? Like, Partey, I love you. I loved his Instagram post yesterday. He's superb. I think he might even be the best player at the club right now. and He's only played a few games. But that was really poor. Yeah, I'll be interested to hear what you guys think about that situation. I, I'm not going to change my opinion. I wouldn't say that the right thing, the right thing I would have done, and what I think he should have done, sat down and raised his hand in the air. And said, that's when most referees know he's seriously injured. Or, yeah. But he might think, the relationship that he has with Arteta, he might have thought, look, let me go over and tell him I need to come off, um, get someone else warm. But I suppose you could have done, sat down, like I said, and done this. But yeah. I'm not going to put the blame on him because he, he was unable. So if he sat down, the goal still would have happened regardless. Yeah, the goal probably still would have happened. Still would have happened. I just think it is not his fault we conceded. There's another bit I really want to point out. We're going to see in this clip, but it was poor. Anyway, okay. let's go through it. So there's two, there's two phases to this. The first is actually the really good position Lacazette got into and the good runs that put us in a really good situation. He gets the ball and he feeds Bellerin. Actually, John, let's play it all through. Obviously, it goes behind Aubameyang. Ore picks it up. He feeds that ball into Lo Celso and off they go. It's funny how they're kind of at different tempos. He, he lays it off to Son. Kane sort of checks his run. Son carries it in. It's not perfect. It's not my best one. No, that, right. is, that, that was class. Fine. That was class. But there's, there's two bits I want to pick out. So firstly, I know we conceded. I know it's mad that I'm saying this after conceding a goal. But actually, a little bit of credit, I think, should go to Arsenal and the position we've got ourselves here. With Lacazette dropping in plays a lovely ball into Bellerin, and actually we get into a really decent... We've got him behind Spurs for the first time. That's yeah. what I'm liking here. Yeah. And it is with that ball there. And that's the, and we've spoke about this many a times, I don't know if you guys have watched it, but we do this excellently in the Europa League. Expect to see it tonight. Between the full-back and the yeah. centre-back, the ball playing, uh, played between and then getting it cut across the, the box. Obviously, 44 crosses, mm. 32 in the, 34 in the last game. You expect to see that tonight. Um, I'm sure, unless there's a whole new team, but I'm sure we'll probably see it because Arteta... No, will, I'd be surprised. Arteta will be trying to, I think Arteta's still trying to push it. But um, yeah, you're right. This is one time I was like, oh, this is a chance. And then... Mm. So right, and that was the thing. Everyone's going, oh, come on, we could score. And then 10 seconds later, 20 seconds later, we've conceded. Now, there's this next bit here, which is worth looking. So Dyer... So it's not Dyer. Uh, Dyer's there, obviously. Bellerin... It was a Dyer cross, is really <laughs> what I'm thinking. Bellerin um, tries to put it in the box, but there's you know, communication's wrong with the Bamian. He's cut it back. The thing is, I actually don't blame Bellerin there. I'll tell you why. We scored a lot of goals, or at least we've had a lot of moves under Arteta where the wingers made the run mm -hmm. and they get into that position Bellerin's in. And instead of crossing it to the man in the box where everyone's thinking, it's actually a pull back that, to yeah. the next man. Mm -hmm. So that's where I actually don't blame Bellerin. I think that's sort of part of his instruction. Yeah. And Aubameyang maybe he's not read it or not understood or he's made a run hoping someone else would be there. Whatever. It's not happened. But this is where it goes badly wrong. Now, you've got to forgive me. Tierney maybe isn't massively all the way out there. He's maybe a bit closer. But what happens here is absolutely true. Ore gets the ball and four men Press. all get dragged into him. Tierney, Jacker, Lacazette and Saka. I really commend the players for getting into that position, pressing high up the pitch, chasing. I don't know why they all went, though. No. You don't need all four. Yeah. And if you do send all four... You have you, to win the ball. You have to win the ball. But it goes straight into Lascelles, Celso. And then look and at where's that. where's Partey? He's getting pushed on the Partey pitch. Partey's, yeah, getting bounced back <laughs> off Arteta. <laughs> saying, get on the pitch. I, again, I can only laugh, otherwise I cry. <laughs> Lo Celso gets the ball. Kane sort of looks like he's going to make a run and field doesn't. By this point, Bergvine has taken Gabriel with him. Yeah, that part of the play is not too. too important. Again, you're probably, where's William? where's Bellerin? They're running back, but, but it's irrelevant. They're, they're not in this part. Well, actually, where's Bellerin? He's, he's probably in their box still. Um, Son's got the ball, rolls it into Kane, and it's a really simple finish. Sorry. It's a simple roll, but the finish isn't. It's a wonderful finish. It's a great finish. Into the, I meant he's... Well, that's what I meant. Anyway, do you know what? It's giving me just a headache trying to trying to talk about this game, but there's a lot that goes wrong. First, keep your arm parte. He's walking off. 
And, and, and the thing is, where I do... That was quite do, fast. Yeah, four, four, yeah four, four, he wasn't that quick. He wasn't that quick. <laughs> where I look at the four, um, Tierney, Jacka, Lacazette and Saka, who come and press here, where I do defend them, and it's bad, but where I do defend them is Partey is probably normally in that position to sweep up, and he's yeah. very good at sweeping up by himself. Yeah, he would have been on Lascelles. He would have, he would have covered um, Lascelles there. Yeah. But then still, who, but does that, do you not blame the players for not being aware of their... They sh- they're, these are Premier League players. I mean, I'm oh, no, no. I being Did Partey harsh? tell them? Did they not? I know. They should have won the game. It's a catalogue of errors. The ball from Bellerin to Bamang's not great. A Bamang's run's not great. It's all bad. It, it's all really, really bad, you know. I... If the four players are pressing them that high up the pitch, I'm thinking, well, you've clearly been instructed to do this. Yeah, you yeah. don't chase like that if you're not like, under instruction to. Agreed. But by this point, again, what are we looking at? It's you know, Partey trying to get back, but then sort of stops and knows he can't. It's again, it's holding, dropping back, dropping back. Is Song going to hit it? No, he doesn't. He keeps running at him till he gets into the penalty area and then Kane finishes. Yeah. And... Uh, it goes back to my calls for Saliba playing. Is Saliba, who's faster, probably stronger than Holding? Is he going to deal with that sort of counter-attack threat better? I don't know. I don't want to say any more about this. But I don't know if you've got anything to add. I just look at this and I just think a catalogue of errors, naivety, lack of quality, mm. lack of um, real... What's the word? Lack of a real press. How can four of you go and not win the ball? Yeah, how can you, um, how can you not press or, or cover a mat? Like, yeah. See everyone go in and think, you know what, let me... Just run to a man that's free. I so commend that's... the intention. Yeah, I commend yeah. the intention to press up. The they would have. They would have been instructed. And try win the ball back. They would have been instructed. They would have said that was an opportunity yeah. that just missed. We get the ball back quick. We can score from this. But that's. But in my opinion, that's playing into Mourinho's hands. I think that's what he, he's so technically genius that that's what he wants. I just feel like, yeah, he he knew Mourinho had a game plan. He executed it perfectly. As much as I hate to say it, I'm not a Mourinho fan at all. Mm. Um, but he executed his plan well. I mean, that's probably. They only had their two really chances and they, they converted them. So that's yeah, that. I agree. Let's move on to, and this is, this is, I'll move on, yeah, to the two quickly, Abamyang's. Abamyang. Yeah. Um, that took a lot longer to analyse than we thought it would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there was a lot to break down. There's a lot and, to... and it's painful, but we do have to do it. Definitely. Like, there's no point breaking down when we win. Yeah, you know, we, like, we, 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 you know, we've got to look at what goes wrong as well. Kenny G says these guys are still on the Spurs game. Nope, we're off it now. We're moving on. Um, too many good teams coming into Champions League, into Europa. Tony says, um, ship the whole squad out, refresh, says Mark. I've seen a lot of people say get rid of everyone. Um, no confidence in the side either, Messi player says. Um, yeah, that we, we always back up and back up. Hassan says, which is true. Yeah. Um, no one really presses the ball. Mm-hmm. Apart from Gabriel, I think he does that well. He gets to the ball fast. Um, zero offsides, what a goat. <laughs> He's read the stat. Right, let me get into this then. Um, let's talk. So I'm going to talk about Yang before we build your 11s. I'd say now, now, yeah, we're not, gonna, we're not doing our 11s. Are we? No, we've done, no, our done our it on, on the pre-match. pre-match. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll build a couple of the fans once. So guys, I think now while I'm doing this breakdown of Abamyang, this is probably the time to get into who you want to see start um, today and we'll get... We'll get into it and break it down and see you guys' teams. But first, just hear what I have to say, because I'm a striker, speaking to another fellow striker. Um, I had a look at Aubameyang's stats. Now, just to start, this is only against Spurs. In my opinion, can be kind of unfair. It's one match we're picking from. Spurs are a great, they're top of the, well, I'm not going to say a great team. They're top of the league, so I just have to give them to that. So doing his stats for one game is difficult. But I did look at the, I did look at the Wolves game as well, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you a few stats from there as well, just so I'm not being unfair, because stats don't always paint a full picture. Right, Aubameyang against Spurs. 23 touches. Just so you guys make this, make this clear to you, that he had the least amount of touches within the whole Arsenal team. Um, bar, who come on? Is it Inket- I think Nketiah yeah, came Inketia on. Yeah, Nketiah came on came, one point, yeah. got nine, but he came on late, uh, nine touches. But Aubameyang, out of everyone on the pitch for Arsenal, he had the least amount of touches. That, that to me, if I was a player, and I had the least amount of touches on the team. It just shows, one, it's lack of confidence because I, I, I would always want to get on the ball. I think Aubameyang's known to want to receive the ball as well. He's not a player to hide, in my opinion, mm. at all. And even if he is hiding, he'll always pop up with something like a goal or an assist. Um, but unfortunately, he's being frozen out. Maybe that's down to managerial um, tactics from the other team, counter, um, saying just stop Aubameyang and we stop Arsenal, which... Which could be which could be a fair argument if you stop Aubameyang, you stop Arsenal. But right now, Aubameyang yeah, I not, think I yeah. think there's a lot of truth to that. So there's that. Also, I want to say in the formation we played, we played a four-two-three-one. Aubameyang's the top of the tree. I think Arteta is trying to play to four Aubameyang. Let him be the lone striker. We do all the work in here. Get it to him. 
it hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm trying to say to you guys. It hasn't worked. And we've got players around him, Lacazette playing off him, mm -hmm. Saka, Willian. Mm -hmm. They're not kind of, they're wingers, yes, but they're ball players as well. And none of them have made an, they've made, they've not made a difference. Mm. To Aubameyang's form. Agreed, agreed. So, so that's that. That's that's my thing on touches. I think he's very frustrated at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if he starts today just to get the enjoyment of the game back. And well, he won't. Goals. He won't. He's being rested, so mm. we know he won't. Oh, mm. I didn't catch up on that. Man. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, bring on Balogun. <laughs> but 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 but, the, but it's worth pointing that out because we both wanted him to start. Like, yeah. Like and and what I want to add to this is, I think the thing that's kind of frustrating from the from a touches perspective is. Uh, no, do you know what? I'll let, I'll let you carry on. I'll let you carry yeah, on. Let me carry I was going to say, say something, but there's no point. Sorry, Frequency just said, what do you lot think about Fekir coming in, the, in this window? I wouldn't be angry at that. I've take never... anyone. Take, yeah, take it at a word. Um, I'm going to talk about touch in the box was only four. Yeah. Now, it's, it's, it's a stat in itself. You guys can read that and read into it as much as what it says. Four touch in the box. We had 44 crosses. No conversion. Um, I don't need to talk about that. It's well, it's not even getting to a <laughs> Yeah. I'm not so. blaming him. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Also, this uh, is a team have, issue. Have to mention that Bamiyang. I listen. Love you as a player. I look up to you as well. We're not. We're not. We're not bashing Bamiyang here. This is not. We're not going on, in on him. It's more the team around him not giving him um, the opportunities at all to play and do mm. what he does best. Shots. He only had two. Um, that's including block shots. So I think he only had one. That mm. actually that wasn't on target. Uh, he had one. So again, it's just it just relates back to the touches. He has the least amount of touches, least amount of shots. He's not doing. He's not firing and it's, it's upsetting me. We need him back on form. Fouls won. Now, the reason why I highlight this, I love getting fouls. It helps bring the team up, give them a breather. Um, mm. Strikers are kind of known for it also, as well as creative midfielders. It's a good trait to have. Fouls won, zero. It just means, again, it's just highlighting. He's just not in the game. Offsides. Now, offsides is not directly to him. I know it says zero. Someone said zero offsides, goat, right? Now, that's, it's not goat status, because if he has many offsides, that means at least he's making runs and he's getting opportunities to get put in. And that people in. are looking to find him. Exactly. However, he's got no offsides, which means... Mm -hmm. And I don't think he even had many opportunities... Well, it clearly shows he didn't have many opportunities on the stats here. So, it, that's not his problem. I think that's, again, the midfield and the players around him not giving him the opportunity or even allowing him to get into the game. He's playing as a lone striker up top. He should be having chances. I mean... And, and just some context to that, right? With the offsides, we know Spurs play a deep block. Mm -hmm. I get that. We know that with the fouls, one thing, Aubameyang's not one to drop in and get the ball, especially when Lacazette's playing the 10. I yeah. get that too. So that's all context. It's important to know. However, and this is where I'm being critical of Aubameyang, and I hope he forgives me. Um, if you're the number nine, and all right, you're not getting shots on goal, you're not getting as many touches as you like, you're not being as dangerous as you like, fine. But if you're not being caught offside, maybe he's making the run, so that's part of the team as well. Yep. And you're not winning fouls. What are you doing? What are you doing? And that's a bit hard. I know, I know that might be really harsh. I love a banner. This guy has carried us for years. Mm -hmm. If anybody in the Premier League is due a bad run and can be forgiven for it, for what they've done, like, pound for pound for their team, yeah. it's a Bamiyang. But... That does worry me a little bit because is he making the runs and the midfield aren't looking for him? Is he, you know, well, okay, well, he's not getting the ball over the top, so is he coming back? And if he's coming back into midfield to try and get it, mm. why is he not? He's, he's got enough skill, he's fast. Why is he not winning a foul? Why is it, look, look at Jamie Vardy, how many penalties he wins mm -hmm. because of his movement and the way he turns players. And I'm just saying it worries me that in a game where the, the match was quite congested, he wasn't able to. Find a bit of space in behind. Okay, yeah. that's probably understandable. Not win any fouls, not be able to look after the ball and, and earn us a bit of a spot. It's something Lacazette's been doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. I don't know, worth pointing out. And I'm not blaming just him, but it's not right, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And then, that, guys, that's it from me. Um, but obviously, goals is the last at zero. <laughs> sure. I mean, you guys can clearly, you know, you know the result. But let's go on to now. Creating your 11s. I see you guys getting in the comments. Uh, I want you guys to fill me in on this. Craig David and Harry Potter. That's what they're saying. You've had now. so many. So names. many. I've had so many. Yes. Um, <laughs> Go on, guys. What's your eleven? I don't know if anyone picked up on that. But if you did, let me know. What um, do you guys want to see? Brett Runnison. Right. So we have got one Runnison in goal. Right. Okay. Do you know what? Because this was the team we had against. Yeah, you should set up a. a, a, a you, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm. Just, I don't know why. I'm, <laughs> that sounded like I was quite bitter telling you off. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Seth. Runnison, Runnison in goal. Bellerin. <laughs> Bellerin. Saliba. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. Come across like that. 
You know, James, you really should have you should have <laughs> done all the prep for all those old shows. Sorry, that was poor for me. Bellerin, Saliba, <laughs> Mari, um, Tierney. Saliba won't play, but it's fine. Yeah, Saliba's not because he's not in the squad. But um, hey ho, hey ho, we can all dream, and it's what you guys want to see. It's what I want to see as well. But unfortunately, it's unlikely we'll see Saliba. Um, <laughs> This is by Bear Van Enfield, by the way. Sorry, I should have commented, said, said that. And then Aziz in midfield with okay. Niles and Smith Rowe. Wow, we're going really young. And Willock. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Aziz, Maitland Niles, Smith Rowe, Willock. And then, I don't know if this is going to work. Hold on. This is too many players, I think. So let's put them all on and we'll figure it out. Then it's, yeah, you've got Willock as well. Yeah. Right. Then he says Nelson, Balogun, Pepe. Yeah, it's too many players. <laughs> Um, Sorry, um, Bavan, uh, Bivan. Well, Nelson's out injured, so we'll make that decision for him. Yep. Balogun's in. Saliba's in. And up. Pepe, did he say? Yeah, Pepe. Pepe, 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 Pepe. You're right, I should have been prepped. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Sorry. All right. So, okay, all right, I'm going to call it a diamond. Okay. What cool. was the name again? Shout out. Bivan. Thank you very Bivan. much. Thank I've gone you. for this for you. A diamond. Because um, Nelson can't play, so I've just taken him out. Yeah, that's he plays. Um, cool. Why not? Yeah. Or, or the other thing it could look like is Smith Rowe out on the left with Balogun up front, front and Pepe on the right. right. Yeah. Could easily be that. So um, I do think. I'd, yeah. We know Nelson's out. Apparently he's had a head injury. Nothing too serious, but obviously precautionary. He's not playing. Um, Happy Aubameyang. birthday. Oh yes. Happy birthday, Reese Nelson. Twenty-one. Absolutely. Boy, what a time. Twenty-one. I thought he was a bit younger, but yeah, no, you know, twenty-one today. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Um, and uh, we know Abame and Lacazette haven't travelled either, so you'd think there's a start for Smith Rowe in this. You really hope there is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I like that. What's the next so one? Move on. Harry Stuller has Runnison, Cedric, Runnison and goal. Sorry, Cedric, Chambers, Mari, Kalazanac. Okay. Now, if he's not injured, he says. But Kalazanac uh, is oh, he is, isn't, injured. He oh. is injured. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I thought so. He is. Saying. He also has a minor injury that's keeping him out. But cool. Minor injury. I yeah. now don't believe anything's minor at Arsenal because we thought Partey's was minor, but here we are. Yeah. Um, El Nene, Maitland in the midfield. Okay. Please let us know your formations as well. I'm just reading off how it, we're going to obviously have to guess them. But he says in the midfield. Then he says Smith, Rowe, Reese, Nelson, Balogun. And maybe Martinelli for the first or second half. Do you know what? This is a great okay. question. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to read that back to you because I know you, that was quite a lot of names. No, that's all right. Um, ma- yeah, so Smith Rowe, Reese, there we go. Nelson. Ba- you got it? Yeah. Amazing. I just want to quickly just talk on um, Martinelli. Do you think yeah. we'll see him today? No. Do you not? No, I think he, he only played, what, two nights ago? Yep. Uh, for the under 21, 23s, yep. whatever it was. Came um, up at half time, though. Yeah, I think that was an injury thing. I think that's, I think, as in that's to look after him because of the injury he's had. Okay. I do not. I would be very surprised if he's in the squad. If he is, hallelujah, that would be quite That'd special. That'd be great. I'd love that. That'd I'd love him to get 10 minutes today, but yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank Let's you very go. much. Thank you very much, Majid. Sorry, we didn't really break that one down. Um, I didn't really break it down. I think that's... Well, the, the back four is definitely what I would like to see. Obviously, Klasnach is out, out, so yeah. we're probably talking... Tierney playing. Do you think Tierney will start? I'd, I'd like him not to, but I, maybe make the Niles at left back, but he did well in midfield, it'd be a shame for him. Uh, maybe there's a young acad- academy left back who. Ben Cottrell's played there. Tierney, I mean. Ben Cottrell's played at left back in seriously? a friendly, yeah, so maybe he maybe. might he could play. He did play the other night as well, though. Why not? Played a full yeah, night. Well, but yeah, anyway, for him or Bellerin? To practice throwing. There we go. I hate you. Thank you very much. Um, Majid um, has a team, 4 2 3 1. Yep. He says Runnison. Yep. In goal, Cedric, Chambers, Mari, Niles. Right. Mate and Niles in the back. Four. Cool. Five minutes. El Nene, Ceballos in the midfield. Ceballos. Ooh. Cool. Forgot about that. Okay. Nah, we're going to use him in the Premier League, I reckon. There's, yeah, sorry. Um, Emil Smith Rowe, Pepe, Martinelli, and Enketia. Remember, it's a 4 2 3 1, so he's saying Enketia up top by himself. Pepe, Martinelli, and Enketia. Well, he, he wants Pepe, he wants Martinelli up front, and Enketia. No, Enketia probably up front in the one. Yeah. Um, but where's the. And a 4 2 3 1, so it'll be Smith, Rowe, El Nenny, so but there we go. Yeah. That's your, that's your team. Cool. Good you team. Think? I don't think we'll see Martinelli. Yeah, I don't think we'll see Martinelli. But otherwise, yeah, good team. Why not? That's that's a it's a team I would not be surprised if we saw. Yeah, that's not that's that seems that seems fair. Mm. Ah, 
Martinelli for Balogun. And then, I, I, do you know what? That actually would probably be my prediction for today. Um, oh, Sabios though. Who else was, who was taking? Willock. Jack has not travelled. Okay, so Willock. So Jack at, so Willock. Jack Just to remind you guys, playing. Willock got man of the match last game against this team, Dundalk. And I think he really, he, by just watching him, and I know how players, I can see, that sounds mad, but I can just see by the way they play, that he really was enjoying it. Um, I think Arteta would be silly not to start him today. So I'd say Sabios for Willock. Or Sabas for any one of the two, but that's mm. around that team. That's kind of the the idea. And Martelli for Bal- um, Balogun. But yeah, um, last one. Let's do one more. Yeah, one more to end it. Um, Jk, why mm-hmm. not? Let's do you, bro. Big up Jk. Four, two, three, one. So we have the same sort of formation. Mm-hmm. Oh, geez, didn't see this coming. Leno in goal. Well, Leno's not travelled, but that's okay. This is what they want to see, so that's yep. fine. Uh, Ronison out. Let's get Leno. Cool. Cedric, Chambers, Mari, Tierney. There's a lot of Premier League games coming up. Yeah, Premier League games are coming in thick and fast. We've got to mm-hmm. save these players. Not, not saying they're not doing, to be fair, they're not doing great, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> Mari, uh, we've done that. Elneny and Willock in the midfield El as Nenny a two. And, oh my. What are your thoughts of that? Elneny and Willock? Yeah. In, yeah. Even in the Premier League, wouldn't it be fair? Wouldn't no. be strong enough. Nah, it's not. It's not. It's not inventive enough. Like, I I take it over. I'd have them two over but having Jack in there only yeah. because of their mobility. Every time I say I don't want Jack to play, I feel like I'm digging the guy. I'm, I'm not. I, I genuinely think there's, mm. he's got talent. I just don't think for what we want to do, he's right. Mm. So yeah, I would, would want Willock and El Nenny over him. Over yeah. him. Okay. So in the three, um, J.K. wants Pepe, Emil, and Nelson. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then Eddie up top. There you go. There's cool. your team. Thank you. I mean, I would be surprised if Tierney starts. We know Nelson isn't. I mean, basically what we all know is that everyone's crying for Smith Rowe. Mm. What I, would, I, I want to end on this, actually. Really impo- if Smith Rowe starts, this is a big opportunity for him. Yeah. If, we, if Smith Rowe can start in pressing, starts getting some Premier League game time as well, yeah. Smith Rowe starts doing really, really well. And then in January, you add a number 10 and maybe another creative midfielder. Because apparently, supposedly, we're looking at one or two. Mm. There's a lot we're linked to. Buendia, Awa, Eriksson, Zabozla, whatever. There's loads of them. Suddenly, with the emergence of one youngster and two signings, the team starts looking a lot more accomplished in that area. So, you know, good good luck to him. I hope he plays today and I hope he plays really well because it's really important for the club that a player, not just an academy product, but you know, someone of his ilk can mm. step up. So, Agreed. Yeah. Listen, thank you, Take Glasgow, for your um, positive comments as well in the comments. I see you, big up. Um, big up everyone as well, being positive. Listen, positivity to the end. Thank you for tuning in to our pre-match build-up show. Before we go, I want to ask a question. If Balogun scores a hat-trick tonight, do you drop Lacazette and Aubameyang and start <laughs> him on, <laughs> on the weekend? That's all I want to know. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the start of the 11 and then the watch along. Have a great, great, great day. <laughs>